-hmm. Do you see this as a, a rebuilding process or like an, op you, you already said it, you see it as an opportunity to scale up, but do you see this as a rebuild? Yeah. Because I mean, that's the name of the show. So <laughs> don't exclude me, okay? Don't, don't exclude me from the show just because I'm positive, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm a little bit nervous, uh, I think I'm less nervous now. There was never certainty in anything, right? Key to winning this game is staying here. Welcome back to The Rebuild. My name is Brian and this is another Founder Deep Dive session. Today, we're looking at our first chat with Renata. She's a young entrepreneur who's been displaced from Shanghai, managing her running startup remotely, uh, juggling various vendor challenges and trying delicately to get her marketing message right during this crisis. She's also one of the more lighthearted rebuilders, and we had a really good laugh throughout our talk. But she was stuck on a remote island with poor internet connection during this recording, and I've tried to edit out those issues as much as possible. Finally, we're currently editing our second round of the rebuild, so make sure you subscribe to catch that. Thank you for watching, and let's take a deep dive into Renata's story right now. I came to Shanghai in 2017, and then in uh, on 2018, I started my startup project. Uh, it's related to sports, specifically to running. So we work around old China and we have people from different cities. And what I think I love the most, because I think I was solving my own problem, is like I like to run by myself, but I like to have the sense of a community that there is something greater than just me. So that's what we do. We connect people throughout all the China and like we believe that running doesn't need to be a solo sport when you're a part of the great community. So if I could like overly simplify and dumb it down for people like me, it's like you have <laughs> you, you, your, your passion about running. You created this platform and a community yeah. where you're trying to attract others to uh, this platform. It's called You Run, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. You didn't yes. even say so, the name of your company. Uh, <laughs> Damn. <laughs> well, right, right so. now I'm kind of changing because it was uh you run shanghai because i started in shanghai but then it grew around china but the fact is like on wechat for example i cannot use you run china because it's too specific to china and they have some regulations on that so they don't allow me so yeah it's uh you run shanghai you can uh, find me on wechat instagram facebook <laughs> I'm sure Brian will share also all the links. Yeah, I'll, I'll link it up so everybody can find you. Because I, I think it's a fantastic mm -hmm. idea, right? It's for those people who don't know or don't feel that motivated and they need a little bit of help, they can mm -hmm. go on this platform, yeah. sign up for like a challenge that fits within their, their capability and find other people who are doing the, the same thing so they can kind of compare against. And at the end, you really get the physical reward at the end. So like people can hold it and wear it and take pictures and stuff like that <laughs> and show it off to your friends on on WeChat and Facebook. So uh, yeah, that's like, a really yo. cool idea. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank um, you. And so you've been around. For like I a wonder year why you still half. haven't. Yeah, sorry. I, I wonder why you still haven't uh, joined it. <laughs> you always say, how great is this idea? <laughs> yeah, that's a good Maybe question. you should try also start running. <laughs> you know, How's the there quarantine like right three now? Meter, is there a three meter uh, <laughs> challenge? Because that's how far I run, no. basically. I'll just go. <laughs> No? Yeah, I don't know if it's going to work for uh, me. From a living room to a fridge. <laughs> yeah, that's basically from my, myself to the couch. <laughs> the, the office to the couch. Uh, yeah, so where was I? Oh, right. Can you back up a little bit and tell us how you started the company? Like, what was the initial starting point? Yeah, well, yeah, I kind of uh, just posted in some WeChat groups and then I just recorded it myself. So people were just sending me the screenshots of the runs, and I did everything manually. Just like, it down. Yeah. Typing it in. In the beginning, like, yes, it was horrible. I remember, like, when I started the first challenge challenge, it was a winter challenge, when I felt like people need the motivation the most, when it's cold outside, especially in Shanghai, it's raining. And um, I had around 50 people who signed up that time to a winter challenge. And wow. I, I created like a folder for each of my runners on my computer. And I was sending this like all the runs and like then just putting to the folder. 
Wow. <laughs> yes. And like, I think that's really helped me to really remember all my runners and have more close sense of communication. Wow. Okay. Well, even let's, at that let's just fast time, forward a little bit. Um, what they, happened in January then? I, I knew you were traveling and that's why you're not in Shanghai right now. Uh, but what happened for you? So, yeah, in the beginning, it was like not a big deal because I think it was just starting. And anyway, I knew I want to go and travel. I was uh, going back to Russia and I was taking my mom also on vacation. Later on, when uh, in China they <laughs> implemented the quarantine, that was a bit tough for me because, um, well, I didn't have the new challenge to join, but still, like, uh, because nobody kind of could go out of the apartments, so only a few actually, no, actually, they could go out of the apartments, so that's what I was trying to promote as well. Like, I even did, like, a promotional video, like, saying, like, what will you choose? Like, stay at home and feel depressed or, like, go outside and prove yourself what you're capable of. And that, I think, really helped. But I still received, like, a few messages from my runners saying it's unfair for, for me to push them to go on the runs because it's unsafe. So I just, like, when I encountered this, I told that it's, like, a decision of the person so this is just my personal opinion as like a founder of the company. I'm thinking that um, it uh, should be safe if you follow the rules. But if you are afraid, you can also stay at your apartment. I'm not going to push you and I'm not going to come to your apartment and say like, you go out for a run like right now. Like this is not going to happen. It's maybe uh, that you were supposed to. But that the big challenge that I faced is that the factory was closed. So I could not even deliver the medals that people have uh, earned. And I was so afraid that it will demotivate my runners. Yeah. You know, you know what's interesting? But luckily, most of them. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I was just uh, well, interrupt for a second. I, I really, I think what's interesting is that everybody else, when they were talking about their business, was that they were talking about the business itself. And what you're talking about are the people. I think that, that really is what makes you so special and unique. Is that you? You think about like your your communication with them, right? Uh, you, you talk about their yeah. motivation. You talk about right, like how do they feel, right? And it's not really about the dollars and cents of the business. Uh, it's not about like the number of new runners or the the increase of traffic to the platform or anything like that. I think it's it's you're you're extremely unique in that regard, and I I appreciate that. I can also understand how it might have been difficult uh, to find the right balance between, you know, getting people to, to go outside and, and be healthy and, uh, and their own feeling of safety and the actual safety, because, you know, this was a month or two months ago when there was still a lot of uncertainty. Right. And so I can see, yeah. I can understand how there's a lot of people who are conflicted by that. And, and I'm sure I'm guessing your, can I ask about the numbers, not the revenue numbers, but like, were you, were you, was it a, mm -hmm. did you see like a, a huge dip in, uh, in productivity? Yeah, I just right now it's um, harder because uh, some of them like I lost like the clients because they left China. You know, it it is it's it's pretty painful. I mean, to hear that like and see that your runners are now like they're stuck and they're uh, you know some of the demotivated. Most of them are doing well. That's cool. And then you have the supply side uh, problem of like or supply chain side of like getting the your your medals to the specific runners all around the world. Um, so that's. It must be, like, how do you feel about all this? Like, do you, do you see this as a, a major problem, a small problem, or what? You know, sometimes I had this, like, kind of sad moments, you know, like, uh, that, for example, I cannot right now return to China, right? So I need to, like, work from Indonesia, even though I cannot complain. But still, it's like, when you are, like, against your will, it's still a bit different feeling, you know? Uh so the other thing, I think the biggest problem for me was a bit of financial. Uh, I used to use a third party to receive the payments. And the thing is that the crisis, it's to, it gets, I would say, it's affected them more than me because they, the most of their earnings is from the selling tickets for offline events. So a lot of offline events, they got canceled. So they have no revenue. So what they told me is that, sorry, we're in a crisis situation, so we're not able to pay your money that you have earned. 
and for me it was like what <laughs> like so i worked hard i also brought you revenue and like you are not going to give me my money <laughs> and i was like what <laughs> that's why i actually started to build a website to be able to collect the money from just my own website Right. Uh, and you were saying, so the payment system went down or is the pay your payment partner uh, was experiencing difficulties because they're, uh, they were obviously affected and that they, they gave that challenge to you, that difficulty, right? They passed it down to you. And that totally sucks. Yeah. And then you start, I mean, immediately you already started to build a new website. So that's incredible. And how's that going? Mm -hmm. uh, I wasted a lot of time because I... I made a mistake. I didn't do, uh, you know, beforehand research. If, for example, if you want to host your website on Chinese servers, there is such a like a long bureaucratic like uh, things you need to do. You need like what I'm right now actually doing is applying for ICP. It's like kind of a permission from a Chinese government to have uh, actually a website on the Chinese uh, servers. Uh, but I really needed to be able to receive like uh, payments through Alipay and WeChat Pay. Because my clients, they are mostly like using them, and right now I also had an idea to do like this uh, online kind of marathon, like half marathon. Like um, I'm right now thinking to do it on the 31st of May. It's like you know, for example, 7 a.m. or 7:30 a.m. Like everybody around China will just like go outside and start running by themselves, and still like you know feel like they're participating in the race, like because they're all together. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I can't hear you again. Hold on. It's it's not. I don't hear anything. Okay, you're kind of coming back. Dancing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, now I see you dancing. <laughs> That's funny. So okay, uh, it sounds like you're already starting to think about how you can you know adapt your business to the future because obviously you're stuck uh, where you are for now, and uh, and there are no offline races. So, you know, your runners, they don't have any kind of alternative, right? So you're creating this alternative for them of the half marathon and the 10K so that you can give them something new mm -hmm. and they can all do it together uh, and stay motivated, which is like your kind of core uh, offering, right? That, that's the best part about your business is that you have this motivation and this community that creates more motivation, right? Um, do you, is it like, how does yeah. this challenge compare to like all the other challenges that you've been facing? Is it, is this... Really, is it really, really affecting you, this uh, pandemic or this economic crisis? In some parts, yes. So I, as I mentioned, it's like financially. And then I also feel like I think it's also a good opportunity for me right now to scale because I think that's what actually people need. You know, they need a community. They need, um, you know, being part of something. It sounds like you're, you're, I mean, I love the way you approached it, right? You, you talked about like, yeah, this challenge and that challenge and, and you know, it kind of sucks, but like almost immediately in the same sentence, you went, but, you know, like, I, here's, here's what I'm going to do about it. Here's how it's a good thing if you're highlighting all the positives, yeah. right? And it's like, it's almost like instantaneous how quickly you're, you can see it as like a positive thing. I think that's really, really cool. And I think that, that is really unique because a lot of people will just kind of dwell on the negatives, right? Um, now I see it as opportunity. But there was a certain period of the rebuilding, like trying to talk to people, also to my runners, trying to understand their fears, trying to, how I, like, to see how I can help them, how I can like, you know, like impact in, like, in this, like, from this perspective and this side then like building actually building my website and like learning i, I think I, I actually learned also a lot of stuff like i'm learning marketing right now myself because i don't have much options i'm learning how to build a website because i have no much options i'm learning a lot of stuff and i'm actually also building myself as like with the project so not only my project is growing but i'm growing with the project that's incredible. Oh my God. I am so inspired. Like that is so cool. I love, I love all of that. I think, you know, so you're, you're totally right. Like so many people there, I mean, you can take this in a, such a passive way in a way that like, you know, you just wait mm -hmm. for this thing to blow over. You don't, you don't do anything about it. And I, you know, I also get it because it's such an emotional thing for some people, either the fear or the panic or having somebody actually yeah. get sick. It's, it is a, a difficult thing. Like I, and I acknowledge that. 
but at the same time, there's some people who are still able to to make the most out of it, and I and and you know to to be able to hear what you've done, um, not just for your business, but for society, for like the people around you, and then for yourself. I think that's like the ultimate. So thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I wonder what comes next. We're gonna check in again in a month, and yeah. I'm curious, like, what do you think is gonna happen? What's your goal in that time? So in this time, yeah, I want to finally get this approval from ICP, like the certificate. So I'll be like having my website on a Chinese servers. It's been a big pain in the ass, to be honest. I just went through a lot of submissions and etc. cetera. Uh, so I think this is like one of my biggest goal that I just, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it, whatever it takes. I'm going to get it, even being here, like far away, I'm going to achieve that as well as I do want to set up this uh, like online running uh, marathon at the end of the month. And I will be so happy to have like a thousand users, at least a thousand users for this uh, health marathon or 10K run. That will mean a lot for me and um, like really in inspire me for more effort because actually through this hard time, yeah, I think, you know, as you're saying this, I'm like, oh, she's so annoying. How could she be so positive and so, <laughs> so like, like, persistent, uh, right? I, and, and it's just, it's refreshing. It's so cool. It's actually like, I think to, for certain people, they absolutely need that. And I hope they, uh, they find you and they find you run and, uh, and they get motivated too. And, and I hope they find this yeah. show and they get motivated in, in some other way. So thank you so much for yeah. sharing your motivation, your positivity and passion with us. Yeah. Um, it's good to hear that you're, you. you're in a good spot, even though is with all this chaos. Um, mm -hmm. I wish you luck with the rebuild and I'll talk to you in a month. And of course, before then too, but I'll talk thank to you soon. Thank you. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Is that, is it's that in Indonesian, yeah. uh, thank you. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, in the region. Thank you. So cool. All right. All right. Well, uh, that's it's it. Rating. <laughs> that's the show. Everybody is always in the process of rebuilding. There was never certainty in anything. But like, if you can accept the failures and know they're learning processes, then for me, like, that's what it's all about. Key to winning this game is staying in the game. Although I'm a little bit nervous, uh, I think I'm less nervous now. And Not only my project is growing, but I'm growing with the project.